and welcome to the story shed hope that you're all keeping well and safe it's a bit rainy outside but it's warm and snug here in the story shed so i'm going to tell you a tale and this one is dedicated to my friend matthew michael taylor whose birthday is today i'm hoping that he enjoys it this story is called the boy who wanted more cheese by william elliot griffiths who doesn't want more cheese, eh? And uh, so sit back, relax, and hopefully enjoy the tale. Klaus van Bommel was a Dutch boy, 12 years old, who lived where cows were plentiful. He was over five feet high, weighed 100 pounds, and had rosy cheeks. His appetite was always good, and his mother declared his stomach had no bottom. His hair was of a colour halfway between a carrot and a sweet potato. It was as thick as reeds in a swamp and was cut level from under one ear to another. Klaus stood in a pair of timber shoes that made an awful racket when he ran fast to catch a rabbit or scuffed slowly along to school over the brick road of his village. In summer Klaus was dressed in a rough blue linen blouse and in winter he wore breeches, woollen ones, as wide as coffee bags. They were called bell trousers, and in shape were like a couple of cowbells turned upwards. These were buttoned onto a thick, warm jacket. Until he was five years old, Klaus was dressed like his sisters, and then on his birthday he had boys' clothes with two pockets in them, of which he was proud enough. Klaus was a farmer's boy. He had rye bread and fresh milk for breakfast, and at dinner time, beside cheese and bread, he was given a plate heaped with boiled potatoes. Into these he first plunged a fork, and then dipped each potato into a bowl of hot, melted butter, and very quickly both potatoes and butter would disappear. At supper he had bread and skin milk left after the cream had been taken off with a saucer to make butter. Twice a week the children enjoyed a bowl of bonny clabber or curds with a little brown sugar sprinkled on the top. But at every meal there was cheese, usually in thin slices which the boy thought not thick enough. When Klaus went to bed, he usually fell asleep as soon as his head touched the pillow. In summertime, he slept till the birds began to sing at dawn. In winter, when the bed felt warm and Jack Frost was lively, he often heard the cows talking in their way before he jumped out of his bag of straw which served for a mattress. The Van Bommels were not rich, but everything was shiny and clean. There was always plenty to eat at the Van Bommel's house. Stacks of rye bread, a yard long and thicker than a man's arm, stood on one end in the corner of the cool stone lined basement. The loaves of dough were put in the oven once a week, and baking time was a great event at the Van Bommel's, and no men folk were allowed in the kitchen on that day unless they were called in to help. As for the milk pails and pans, filled or emptied, scrubbed or set in the sun every day to dry, and the cheeses piled up in the pantry, they seemed sometimes enough to feed a small army. But Klaus, Klaus always wanted more cheese. In other ways, he was a good boy, obedient at home, always ready to work on the cow farm, and diligent in school, but at the table, he never had enough. Sometimes his father laughed and asked him if he had a well or a cave under his jacket. Klaus had three younger sisters, Trincha, Annika and Sartja, which is Dutch for Kate, Annie and Sully. These, their fond mother who loved them dearly, called her orange blossoms. But when at dinner, Klaus would keep on dipping his potatoes into the hot butter while others were all through. His mother would laugh and call him Buttercup. But always Klaus wanted more cheese. 
Well and usually greedy, she twitted him as a boy worse than butter and eggs. That is as troublesome as a yellow and white plant called toad flax. Very pretty, but nothing but a weed and troublesome to the farmers. One summer's evening, after a good scolding which he deserved, Klaus moped and almost crying went to bed in a bad temper. He teased each one of his sisters to give him her bit of cheese and this added to his own slice made his stomach feel as heavy as lead. Klaus's bed was high up in the house. When the house was first built one of the red tiles of the roof had been taken out and another one made of glass was put in its place. In the morning this gave the boy light to put on his clothes and at night in fair weather it supplied air to his room. A gentle breeze was blowing from the pine woods on the sandy slope not far away, so Klaus climbed upon the stool to sniff the sweet piney odours. He thought he saw light dancing under the tree. One beam seemed to approach his roof hole and coming nearer played round the chimney. Then it passed to and fro in front of him. It seemed to whisper in his ear as it moved by. It looked very much like a hundred fireflies had united their cold light into one lamp. Then Klaus thought that the strange beams bore the shape of a lovely girl, but he only laughed at himself at the idea. Pretty soon, however, he thought that the whisper became a voice. Again he laughed at himself heartily and he forgot his moping and the scolding that his mother had given him. In fact, his eyes twinkled with delight when the voice gave this invitation. There's plenty of cheese, come with us. To make sure of it, the sleepy boy now rubbed his eyes and cocked his ears. Again, the light bearer spoke to him. Come, could it be? He'd heard old people tell tales of the ladies of the wood that whispered and warned travellers. In fact, he himself had often seen the fairies ring in the pine woods. To this, the flame lady was inviting him. Again and again, the moving cold light circled round the red tile roof, which the moon then rising and peeping over the chimneys seemed to turn into silver plates. As the disc rose higher in the sky, he could hardly see the moving light that had looked like a lady, but the voice no longer a whisper, as at first was now even plainer. There's plenty of cheese. Come with us. I'll see what it is anyhow, said Klaus, as he drew on his thick woollen stockings and prepared to go downstairs and out without waking a soul. At the door he stepped into his wooden shoes and just then the cat purred and rubbed up against his shins. He jumped, for he was scared, but looking down for a moment he saw the two balls of yellow fire in her head and knew what they were. Then he sped to the pine woods and towards the fairy ring. What an odd sight! At first Klaus thought it was a circle of big fireflies. Then he saw clearly that there were dozens of pretty creatures, hardly as large as dolls, but as lively as crickets. They were as full of light as if lamps had wings. Hand in hand they flitted and danced around the ring of grass as if this was fun. Hardly had Klaus got over his first surprise than all of a sudden he felt himself surrounded by the fairies. Some of the strongest among them had left the main party in the circle and come to him. He felt himself pulled by their dainty fingers. One of them, the loveliest of all, whispered in his ear, Come, you must dance with us. Then a dozen of the pretty creatures murmured in chorus, Plenty of cheese here, plenty of cheese here, come, come. Upon this the heels of Klaus seemed as light as a feather. In a moment, with hands clasped in one of the fairies, he was dancing in high glee. It was as much fun as if he was at a party, with a row of boys and girls, hand in hand, swinging along the street, as Dutch maids and youth do during some weeks. Klaus had not time to look hard at the fairies, for he was too full of the fun. He danced and danced all night, 
and until the sky in the east began to turn first grey and then rosy. Then he tumbled down, tired out, and fell asleep. His head lay on the inner curve of the fairy ring, with his feet in the centre. Now, Klaus felt very happy, for he had no sense of being tired, and he did not know he was asleep. He thought his fairy partners who danced with him were now waiting on him to bring him cheeses. With a golden knife they sliced them off and fed out of their own hands. How good it tasted! He thought now he could and would eat all the cheese he'd longed for all his life. There was no mother to scold him or daddy to shake his finger at him. How delightful! But by and by he wanted to stop eating and rest a while. His jaws were tired, his stomach seemed to be loaded with cannonballs. He gasped for breath, but the fairies would not let him stop. For fairies, specifically Dutch fairies, never get tired. Flying out of the sky from the north, south, east and west they came, bringing cheeses. These they dropped down around him until the piles of the round masses threatened first to enclose him, as with a wall, and then to overtop him. There were the red balls from Edam, the pink and yellow spheres from Gouda, and the grey loaf-shaped ones from Leyden. Down through the vista of sand in the pine woods he looked, and oh, horrors! There were the tallest and strongest of the fairies, rolling along the huge round flat cheeses from Friesland. Any one of these was as big as a cartwheel and would feed a regiment. The fairies trundled the heavy discs along as if they were playing with hoops. They shouted hilariously as with a pine stick. They beat them forward like boys at play. Farm cheese, factory cheese, Alkmaar cheese, and to crown it all, cheese from Limburg, which Klaus could never bear because of its strong odour. Soon the cakes and balls were heaped so high around him that the boy, as he looked up, felt like a frog in a well. He groaned when he thought the high cheese walls were tottering to fall on top of him. And then he screamed, but the fairies thought he was making music. They, not being human, did not know how a boy feels. At last, with a thick slice in one hand and a big hunk in the other, he could eat no more cheese though the fairies led by their queen standing on one side or hovering over his head still urged him to take more at this moment while afraid that he would burst klaus saw the pile of cheeses as big as a house topple over the heavy mass fell inwards upon him and with a scream of terror he thought himself crushed as flat as a friesland cheese but he wasn't. Waking up and rubbing his eyes, he saw the red sun rising on the sand dunes. Birds were singing and the cocks were crowing all around him in chorus, as if saluting him. Just then the village clock chimed out the hour. He felt his clothes. They were wet with dew. He sat up to look around. Uh, there were no fairies, but in his mouth was a bunch of grass, which had been chewing lustily. Klaus never did tell the story of his night with the fairies, nor has he yet settled the question whether they left him because the cheese house of his dreams had fallen, or because daylight had come. And that was the story of the boy who wanted more cheese. We hope you enjoyed it. Let us know if there's any kind of food that you can't get enough of. Maybe you could write a story about that, and send it to us at the Story Shed blog. <laughs> I've forgotten. It's the story shed blog at gmail.com. That's the story shed blog at gmail.com. Send us your stories. Um, maybe you can remind me what the email is so I don't forget it like I just did. And uh, let us know if you can think of anything that would make the story shed better. But in the meantime, take care. Be well. Thank you for listening. And bye bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye.